the internet. Uh, Sagar, what you can do is I can stream from for you from my OBS if you want. Yeah, that could be a possibility. Uh, but okay, le let's see if this uh, works out. Last time, otherwise we will have Vidit who will stream this for us but we are going to learn the italian today at all costs you know from vidit because <laughs> it's not it, it's not often that we get a chance to learn from vidit uh, and and we are not going to miss this opportunity so if nothing goes well vidit you will have to to stream this <laughs> <laughs> sure i think it's working fine now as i see i mean i mean for me it loads well now yeah yeah now it's it's okay uh, i hope that everything yeah. goes well now for the next few minutes at least for an hour all all great adventures you know start with hiccup so so it's good <laughs> yeah so so this will be a great lecture that is for sure yeah now it's working fine i think for me at least when i load youtube i see it working fine so that's great fantastic fantastic uh with it uh, first of all i would like to thank you to for coming here and you know doing streams which are you know uh, where you are uh, talking with the audience and having a nice time is different and this is somehow a hardcore stream <laughs> because you you will be sharing some of your secrets with the with the viewers so uh, what do you have to say about uh, today's show you will be talking about specifically no Yeah. No, it's good for me because people thought that I left chess, so <laughs> they they will see the chess player uh, in me today. So I think it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Today, no, I mean you were of course playing chess all the time with them. Yeah, yeah, but like you know, proper chess, like you know, like I got so many messages sometimes. Ki, are chess chhod diya kya? Chess bhul gaya kya? you know so now i like nahi bula now now we'll show <laughs> are you saying me messages stuff. or when you go outside the room and then you meet your mother and family <laughs> <laughs> memes basically okay yeah. okay fantastic welcome to all the viewers of chess base india uh, and also fans of vidit uh, who are here uh, good to see you guys uh with it so today's discussion will revolve around e4 e5 we are covering this with black uh and uh, okay. what we have done is that for e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 i have recommended the brayer to the to the viewers of this series and uh, in that I, i had the guest on the show amin basim basim amin who is one of the biggest experts of the brayer from black side uh and uh, for the italian which is bishop c4 we are uh we have called another big expert which is you <laughs> italian is like you know one of the lines which nobody has been able to master it because it's so complex i mean uh, you can only know better than someone else but you cannot master it that's the thing of italian because it's like every move there are some nuances every move order has its own tricks yeah yeah so but but i checked that you have played 34 games uh, in the italian uh, out of which four of them are with from the white side so 30 games from black and you have beaten mm -hmm. players like vei zeven andrician uh, ganguly surya shekhar ganguly uh, gawain jones domingos perez My God, what a what a list! You have also beaten Sebastian Bogner, Peter Lecco. So so definitely. Yeah, I mean most of the games are rapid blitz, but Vei was classical, and like you know some other games, but mo most of them are uh, rapid and blitz. Yeah, yeah. So guys, if you have any questions for Vidit, you can keep asking them during the show. But mainly, we'll be talking about. We have the first super chat, which is from Nitesh Dubey, and he says. Sagar sir and Vidit sir, please shout out my wife Amrita. Okay. Shout out Amrita ji. <laughs> Amrita, that's uh, very close to my wife's name, which is Amruta. Uh, okay, so Vidit, uh, first question is: Should Black begin with Knight F6 in this position or Bishop C5? Because it's kind of. Uh... So I can tell you what are the differences. So if you play Knight F6, yeah. uh after d3 let's say 
you can now either play bishop c5 which is italian or you can play bishop e7 which is like the old line um bishop e7 was considered to be like slightly passive but you know the reputation of the opening keeps changing right it's not like same yeah. once you find a new move the complete evaluation of the line changes and uh, there are also some line like d3 h6 uh, for example who i think mamid or someone plays it I, idea of h6 is to stop knight g5 and you want to go g6 bishop g7 actually okay if if allowed so there are many setups and nowadays they even go h6 g5 like then you know modern chess so um, and the downside of this knight f6 murder is that you have to know the lines after knight g5 yeah instead of d3 quite scary stuff here but i think if you know the moves after d5 it's not very dangerous right mm, i'm not sure i'm not sure i mean levon always plays many games in this line nowadays so you have to know your stuff i lost to levon or onion when i played this i was uh, i forgot my preparation in rapid so ah you lost you to, to know black your, yeah with black okay here. okay so the and the problem with bishop c5 if you want to go in italian yeah is that uh, there is another option of for white to play c3 and d4 and not to forget the ivan's gambit because that is quite a scary line itself yes a scary for white yes <laughs> <laughs> so you think black is completely fine after he takes the pawn Yeah, I was watching your uh, morning streams, and I think you taught them this game with Nihal. Yes. Uh, El Tad Safarli Nihal. So I'm quite up to date with the recent theory. <laughs> <laughs> you are quite up to date with morning streams. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I, you know, I'm. I have made this series improving chess for players from 1200 to 2000. Maybe sometimes can go above up till 2200, perhaps. but when we have a 2700 plus player watching it's uh, <laughs> it's flattery yeah <laughs> okay so bishop c5 is what we will focus on yeah today yeah bishop c5 yeah and like we were going to watch some games right right we were going uh, to see your first your game your win against wei because this is something that uh, uh, is very very special first of all wei is uh, a really strong opponent and secondly you are black and you were able to beat him so tell us a bit i think it's it's a funny story i think it was played in this asian nations cup yeah where india and china were playing yeah and china is our main competitor in all asian olympiad all these tournaments so this match had highest importance yeah and i remember during this time i was not playing e4 e5 actually so i was playing sicilian mm mm-hmm. uh, if i remember correctly or caro khan you know like all this other stuff apart everything apart from e4 e5 and actually But, this is uh, your first game in the italian that after bishop c4 yes. i saw this is the first time you played this opening exactly exactly because the night before this game i spoke to anish okay i wrote to him like okay this is the match and you know i might play wei or something like this so his advice was that i should play e4 e5 not go for sicilian or other stuff and mm-hmm. wei of course at that time you know he was like up and coming and there was a, a notion that he's very good in at aggressive chess or with with complex positions and stuff like this so i asked anish should i play for this anish said yeah yeah you should definitely go e4 e5 you have a natural feel for it that's what he said that back then okay so i asked what he means like he just meant he he told that um, it means that you know where to put your pieces here like it comes naturally to you in this line so that was like a confidence booster and after i won this game i never looked back from e4 e5 yeah it's natural because you are positionally very strong and e4 e5 is quite a positional and solid opening so i think it suits you yeah 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 i mean it you have to play all kinds of openings i feel you cannot just stick to one opening you have to try out everything and see what works for you and and also uh, you know this is uh, I, i i mean one of the few advices that you took of anisha yeah? on on a lighter note 
<laughs> I have uh, taken many advices of Anish. Most of the time, I don't regret it. Okay. Yeah, when it comes to his advices. Fantastic, fantastic. I was just trying to be funny, but uh, yes, Anish, uh, <laughs> of course, with all his experience of top level chess, definitely knows what's going to work. Uh, so, so where he went for C three, uh, aiming yeah. to play. Uh, no, sorry, he. One second. I think he played D three me. Ah, I think you went with knight f six move order in this game. You. Uh, I don't recall. Yeah. It could have been. You yes. went knight f six and then D three bishop c five. So we transposed basically c three, hmm. castles castles. Yeah. Yeah. So, I went for this uh, very principal line of D five. Now when I think about it, I don't recall how well prepared I was in this. Uh, compared to what I know now, I feel like I knew nothing. But you know, sometimes that's when they say, "Yeah, ignorance is bliss." If you don't know, you know, you can play. It. If I knew that there are so many lines, I would have probably not gone for this. Yeah. But uh, it, that time it worked out. At least I knew. I had seen some games, and I had some very rough preparation. That's what I recall. But it took Vayi completely by surprise. So that was an advantage for me. Yeah. Also, this move is much more concrete than if you go d6 because then there are many ways to place your pieces. You go a6, maybe you can go bishop e6, so on, like knight e7, knight g6. But here, uh, yes. d5 means the game becomes very dynamic. Yes, yes. And I think in the same tournament, Adiban was playing white. I don't recall against who. And he, uh, his opponent also played d5, and Adiban did not react well. Something like this. Okay. Happened in that tournament. So, uh, in that tournament, we were discussing these lines. I I recall it faintly, four years ago, and I'm getting older, so my memory is not that good. But mm-hmm. yeah. But but with all your experience now, would you say d5 is still a good playable move for black? Um, d5 is good. I think I even played it recently in some games. So I played it against Marcus Rager. This year, so it's uh, one of the main lines. Okay. But you have to know a lot of stuff here. You cannot just play it. Okay. You have to because it's very concrete, as you said. Hmm. Uh, things get sharp. So he took. Uh, you took yes. back with the knight, and it seems like white uh, black has got everything that he wanted. His nice central pawn. His bishop is open. But what's the downside to all of this? um the downside is like it looks like uh, you're active but you know the e5 pawn is constantly under pressure yeah yeah and white uh, gets this e4 square so many times he'll go 92 94 in italian i also used to think that oh this should be great you know the d3 pawn is backward but it's actually very difficult to attack mm. the d3 pawn right uh, if the bishop is on c2 for example it opens a lot of dynamic resources for white as well Yeah. So you gain something, but you also, you know, White has some trumps of his own. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, he played Knight B D two, and there are many options in this position. But he went Knight D two. Uh, and- yeah, I think Knight D two is probably inaccurate, if I remember. I think the main line is Rook E one, and uh, yeah, that's what they play. I think nowadays. Yeah, Rook E one, Bishop G four, H three, Bishop H five. Uh, knight B D two, and then Knight B six. Yes, yes, I think so. I I I think I had a game here against Hari Krishna. Ah, yeah. Okay, so so we will cover the theoretical section maybe tomorrow. You know, when I uh, whenever the guest uh, says a few things, then I also learn from it, and then I create a theoretical section for the viewers. But today we are going to mm-hmm. focus on only <laughs> with its game, so not too much on theory. Knight B D two. Uh, and try to understand the concepts of this opening. So knight b six. Sure. <clears throat> and and so now I have to the, my main point of this is so I have to be very precise. If he gets knight on e four, my pieces will be pushed back. So now I want to attack his bishop and immediately go for his d three pawn. That's the main point. Yeah. So bishop b five because only square. Yeah. Bishop d six. Rook one. Rook one. Uh, attacking, uh, putting pressure on e5. So now the threat is to take and take on e5, perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why I played bishop g4. Bishop g4, and now uh, h3, bishop h5. And now 
Uh, he went for 94, but the natural question, of course, remains: Is this any good in this position? Uh, the immediate answer, short answer, would be no, <laughs> because it weakens the king a lot. We, first of all, you don't even win a pawn. Yeah. I can just take back and uh, take on d3, for example, and your king is super super weak. I'll have f5 next. It just uh, doesn't work for white. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a favorable trade. So, uh, you went bishop g4, he pushed once, but then he went knight e4. And yes, I think that's what they used to play back then. Uh, now the theory has changed. Back then they thought that knight e4, knight g3, if you take the bishop on h5, you're kind of better. Yeah, this is the idea. Uh, he, so, you played uh, f5 and knight g3, yeah, like that. Yes. So uh, I have to take on f3 because if I come back, uh, there is just uh, pawn is hanging. Now your king is not so weak, yeah, comparatively. Yes, yes. So bishop f3, queen f3, and now I have to defend the knight on c6. So that's why I played queen d7. Mm -hmm. So white can take on c6 and double the pawns, like it happened in the game. But uh, in return, I have a lot of space advantage. Like the knight on g3 is kind of misplaced. You know, I have like some space due to f5, e5, the pawns. Yeah. And overall, if you think from white point of view, what are the next moves? It's not very obvious. How will you proceed? Yeah. Whereas with black, many moves come to your mind, like put rook on e8, go for e4, go for f4, maybe, I don't know. You know, there are some ideas which you can spot immediately. If white can keep the bishop pair, then of course it would make sense, but I don't think he can do it. I think one very important thing that uh, top players, uh, how they assess positions is they just have a glance and then they see like, what are the moves that first come to their mind? And you know, because uh, Vidit has such great intuition, uh, moves strike to him naturally and here uh, as he said he feels like black has many more moves uh, which are natural like rook e8 maybe king h8 or e4 or f4 while white's moves are not so easy and that's how I think with it you also prefer certain positions over something that uh, when you choose your openings yeah yeah I mean one of the things my coach early on taught me that if you can see what your next moves are it's a good indicator of your evaluation that your position is fine yeah yeah fantastic okay so uh he played a4 which was like he wants to gain space on the queen side but uh, you just simply pushed him back with a6 yes because he wanted to play a5 and i forced him to trade actually if you wanted to trade he should have done it without pushing a4 i feel because now, at least white's pawn structure on the queen side is better. But if you will see in the game that this move a4 was costly because it weakens his queen side. Yeah, it weakens the queen side. Now, the queen side looks pretty solid. But after a4, b3 square becomes slightly weak. And Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it was an unfavorable trade. By the way, a shout out to Mrinal Shah, who's contributed... Uh, through Super Chat, Mrinal, thank you so much. Uh, and Thanks, Mrinal. Mrinal is a big fan of Vidit, uh, lives in Kolkata. And whenever Vidit uh, visits Kolkata, Mrinal is always there to meet him. Yeah, yeah he's very sweet, <laughs> uh, very sweet guy. Yeah, and also Ajinkya Atlie, Atlie has contributed and he says, if d3 is played by white with the bishop on c4, is knight a5 a typical idea to capture the light squared bishop in the Italian? Yes, of course. If if black can do that, it's very good. And you would see that uh, this idea is also played in Rylopis. So I can show you just briefly some Rylopis lines, okay. which apply e4, e5, knight f3, knight 6, bishop b5, e6, bishop a4, knight f6, uh, let's say castles, bishop e7, d3, uh, d3, b5, bishop b3. Now, like black played d6, and I remember in Isle of Man, you know, automatically uh, white played rookie one, and the player was Ganguly. 
and what happened like he was playing fast so he just of course he knows this idea yeah there's no way he does not know but he was playing so fast that he forgot that black played d6 first before castling and now black can go knight a5 because the e5 Attacking pawn the is defended now pawn is protected ah. yes and in their game he lost two bishops which is a big disadvantage so that's why after d6 they play c3 so any any time if you can get this bishop pair it's a good thing in rai lopez or italian doesn't matter but this example i thought showed the immediate you know perfect uh, yeah. what a great example Effective. actually i i think any move that saves this bishop in this position is good like c3 yes. c3 a3 a4 <laughs> all moves which protect the bishop yeah fantastic okay yes. great example with it uh, coming back to your game uh, as we saw here uh, you said that a4 uh, wasn't a great move but he took took and it looks at first sight that you have some weaknesses here uh, but you have a nice center yeah yeah uh, it's not easy to attack the weaknesses that's the important thing okay so he went c4 yeah again it shows like you know he wants to do something like he cannot just wait passively yeah that's way that's way for you and i think uh, with it now he has matured now he has matured but back then he used to be very impulsive like this yeah this was 4 years ago uh rook b8 you know my first thing that comes to mind is rook e8 somehow but you played rook b8 yes because i thought that i wanted to regroup the knight from b6 yeah and then the b file would be open but i didn't want to go immediately uh so that's how i think i played rook b8 and also the point is i cannot really play c5 a move ago because a5 and then uh, my knight would be stuck i mean the rook is attacked yeah so i cannot play knight c8 so i think this is one of the points yeah if you see actually all grandmaster games every move has a certain point you just have to look for it right right i always tell people uh, that when they when they are quick to say oh what a what a uh, stupid move by this gm or what a stupid move by such a strong player it's usually not stupid they have some thought behind it it's sometimes they have missed certain idea but they always think deeply yes. strong players yes yes okay moving on uh, just a shout out to ashish malik uh, and says vidit sir who is your coach uh, vidit who is your coach maybe well i think uh, when when i gave that example i was referring to evgeny vladimirov okay uh, back when i was struggling to become a grandmaster i worked with him and that's when he gave me that example so uh, it was vladimirov's words okay and and next he also message by grantik uh, he is very regular at my streams in the night and he's saying that it's the first time he's attending in the afternoon <laughs> very sweet thanks grant fantastic vidit has brought his all his fans to to watch here <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much vidit and grantik thank you for for coming out here uh rook b8 a5 and knight to c8 um yes now with black i want to play for example push the pawn to c5 and bring my knight to c6 97 knight c6 and it would be just fantastic i think already black is much much better and he realized that this is a danger long term so he wanted to force things but anyways the position is kind of bad already it shows yeah like how quickly he got worse yeah he played all like kind of normal moves but uh, like followed the theory which was back then probably not so correct and i played all the logical moves here and he quickly got worse yeah he played c5 uh, trying to get at least a pawn like after bishop c5 rook e5 uh but you just yeah i think it's very i think rook f5 it looks like you're losing a pawn this is like a brilliant a very... move yeah like bishop d4 by you no i mean i have to see this when i play rook b8 i cannot just do this uh like you know i have to see all this work so c5 bishop c5 rook e5 bishop d4 rook f5 and now if he wins this pawn he'll just be better but i had this trick knight e7 yeah because uh, rook f4 if he takes then because if he takes, he takes and then the f2 pawn is attacked which is very dangerous for him rook f4 it looks like he almost defends but then i have knight g6 and if he comes back then you jump knight here. f4 
Yes. Your night is so you saw from B6 it went to H4. Sometimes it's nice to notice this things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh so he he played rookie one and now you just got your knight into the game and uh yes, now you look at the rook on B8 wonderfully like you making use of the open file the bishop cannot move from c1 all my pieces are so well placed brilliant i'm proud of them <laughs> yeah yeah this is uh, i think this is the beauty of e4 e5 opening uh, apart from of course with its very nice positional play uh, you you just play natural moves and if your opponent makes certain errors then you are just pushed to the back foot yes because white of course always has an advantage coming from the opening but with e4 e5 it's not that much that's what i feel yeah because you kind of mimic him yeah yeah absolutely so knight e2 was played in the game uh perhaps better was yes. queen d1 in this position with with a complex yes. complex game but knight e2 yes, is natural yeah he wants to attack yeah you want to kick the bishop yes yes but i think i took advantage of it um, by pinning he went rooks all these pieces are working so well and now it may seem like you know i should have taken on b2 but i didn't want to like for example he still sorry after bishop f4 yeah no instead of rook e8 ah, okay. i mean it looks like the pawn is hanging ah, yeah here but i don't want to give my bishop for that bishop on c1 which is not developed yeah because he'll take take and play knight d4 and suddenly his pieces become active just for one point hmm. so here it was more important to keep the activity of the pieces so you played rook f8 and he played bishop f4 threatening your bishop on d4 yes but you simply he, now he couldn't play passively i just took it took rook b1 and now i think now uh, what do you think shall we ask the viewers for for the move sure i think we should ask it's a good good question to good ask good question with its bishop is under attack uh, on b2 uh sh should you retreat it or should you play something else black to move by the way all the people out here please like the video as we mentioned yesterday uh if you like the video i have i have been learning this yeah with it from uh from samai from from tanmai from all the people that youtube tends to recommend it more often if you if there are more likes on your video yes, yes. is it true because they see that the interaction is high and people are liking this video so more people will like it so like that yeah yeah that's the youtube algorithm <laughs> so please like the video i think we have right now uh, 668 likes let's make it 1200 likes that would be very nice okay so the bishop f6 says siddhant uh, maybe not not the best let's see if we have more answers uh vidit fan has got it right absolutely who else <laughs> vidit there are so many people with names like vidit fan uh, vidit gm and so on it's difficult to uh, know their real name it's it's very nice of them that they like you know uh, like what i do and they come and watch i really i i, I feel very uh, humbled by that oh, fantastic By the way we have a young talent here who always attends these sessions and I think in a few years from now he will be a very strong player his name is Ilam Parthi uh and he has mentioned the right move here uh also S Murugan has right move Anudeep Anup you are right uh Anish God say yeah lot of people have given the right answer fantastic with it uh, very nice also we have 1k likes now immediately <laughs> as you asked everyone like the video yeah thank you so much guys uh, vidit please tell us what's the best move here so if i remove the bishop kind of he exchanges the pieces like the bishop f6 uh rook b8 rook b8 and then he'll play rook c1 attacking my pawn yeah so it's no, not really ideal so that's why i came up with another move and luckily it works the point is to defend the bishop but indirectly so i played knight b5 so whoever got it it's very nice very uh, because if the bishop is so taken a knight d4 now i attack the queen and the rook double attack very nice 
So after knight b5, I couldn't take it. So he played knight g3. Bishop c3. Now I'm a pawn up, so I, I was like, you know, when I was playing the game, I remember I was getting very nervous because it's India-China match, mm -hmm. and I'm winning. Yeah, of course, everybody is looking at the game because you don't expect someone to win with black at that yeah, level. Yeah. So suddenly there is so much pressure while we are playing. <laughs> it's, I, I must... uh, and I felt it. I remember I was quite nervous because this would decide if India wins gold or not. My God. Yeah. So that's the stake. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> and I, I would like to tell the viewers that there were four players on each side. And I think Vidit, you are playing on board number two, perhaps? Uh, I was playing board number two or... Uh, three. I think I was board number three. Okay. Maybe I don't remember. So two players in the team get white pieces. Two players get black. And usual strategy in team tournaments is that white players are trying to win, while black players are trying to remain solid, get the half point, the draw, and then. Uh... Yes, yes, I was board number three. Adiman was board number one. Uh, Setu was board number two. I was board number three and Sashikiran was board number four. Okay. I think this, if I recall correctly. And uh, Adiban got a good position as well with black. Okay. Against Boos Yangtze. And Setu was slightly worse against uh, Wang Yu. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sashikiran had like a roughly equal position, something like this. So it was a lot of pressure, I think, at this moment. <laughs> Someone has commented in the chat saying it's like India-Pakistan cricket match. <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure. Well, uh, yes, it's it's a lot of pressure actually. <laughs> but I I'll not compare it to that. But still, there is still a lot of pressure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, China being one of the strongest teams, and also Wei is the youngest ever GM to cross twenty seven hundred. So with its opponent is a very very strong player. And and before this Asian Nations Cup. India had not won the gold medal for, I think, six or eight years, something like this. Oh, my God. So, India had not won the gold. So, that again adds more, like, you know, we are so close, kind of. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pressure. And that's when, actually, you, you tend to uh, make mistakes in a winning position, like you're a pawn up. Yes. So, how did you keep your cool here? Uh, okay, it was such a long time ago. And I don't think I kept my cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to win so badly. Because there was also a funny incident before this. Uh -huh. And it's a very childish, if I think about it now. Okay. Like, in that hotel, there was like... Uh, Towel. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, only viewers of Vidit's channel will get this joke. Uh, so, uh, please go and check the Towel joke of Vidit. <laughs> uh, the funny thing was like, we were... Adiban and me were in some floor, like third floor or something. And the Chinese delegation was in fifth floor. So we were waiting for the lift to go down. And the staircase were not available. And the lift came, it opened, and the Chinese delegation was there. Mm -hmm. And they didn't allow us to enter. Really? <laughs> Back then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they immediately closed the lift. So Adiban and we looked at each other and like, if we are late, if something happens, we have to now, you know, crush them. And <laughs> spoiler alert, it's me and Adiban who won the game. Wow. wow. <laughs> I, and, and so you beat China like two and a half, one and a half or three, one? Two and a half, one and, two and, a half, one and wow. a half, we won. And both the games we won with black. <laughs> well, in the chat, in the chat right now, it is Tawel OP. Yeah, everyone is saying. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <clears throat> okay, G6. Yeah, I just defend my pawn. I'm like a pawn up. So main thing is now I should not give counterplay to him. Yeah. Uh, he went queen d1. Yes, initially I wanted to play f4. The idea is if bishop f4, then I have rook e1. And it's winning. And I win the queen. Yeah, yeah but he has queen b3 check intermediate move. Ah. Always look for your opponent's resources. Yeah. Yeah, I think intermediate moves are one of the easiest things to miss. Yes, yes. As you had taught me during the candidates. Bishop a5. Yeah, I don't recall if I played this correctly and if this was the best. I think black's play could have been improved. Mm. But I think it was enough to get the task done. You are two pawns up and here uh, you played bishop b6, which according to you was not a great move. Maybe f4 yeah. here. Now f4 was good because I win a pawn. So let's see he goes queen b3. 
now i can just exchange queens queen d5 for example okay so if he takes pawn takes queen takes pawn takes yeah yeah bishop f4 and now i think uh, you know you know with it just a second uh, i want to invite a guest hello no uh, hi mr surya ganguly do you know you are live on air okay and do you I know who is who know. is my guest right now with it oh how do you know <laughs> how do you know um that's the most obvious thing <laughs> <laughs> and and we did discuss one of your examples allowed until 8 o'clock ha baad mein usko so jana rehta hai until that only he can be like <laughs> with it uh, with it is right now laughing his heart out but deep within he knows that he has to end the stream soon <laughs> so, so i will i will give you a call once this stream ends if it's okay Awesome, awesome. What what you guys are talking about? We are talking about Italian from black. Italian from black side. Yes. What is the current position on the board? It is Vidit versus Vei. Sorry, Vei versus Vidit. Uh, where Vidit no, beat no. Vei with black. So which tournament? Uh, Asian. What is this angle? You don't know the, the <laughs> highlights of Italian the master yeah, classes. Yeah. Vidit is saying you don't know the highlights of such a game, like such a great game played ever. <laughs> in the italian <laughs> ah okay okay theek hai main check kar leta hu abhi dekh leta hu chalo you guys enjoy it's not as good as mare ko game but theek hai sorry i said you guys enjoy and give me a call once you are done sure sure and vidit has just mentioned that this game although good is not as good as mare ko's game so you know <laughs> <laughs> i well Also, if I would uh, remember uh, with it uh, during my game with it or uh, during my game with you, Yangi, uh -huh. I am sure I would have found a simpler way to win. Typical with it Hallu style. Really? <laughs> yeah. I I think he's talking about this world team championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was world teams. I think, guys, if all in the chat should look at two games by Surya. One is against Mareko Sandro, and other against you, Yangi. both fantastic wins uh, surya thank you for calling us actually we this was not planned at all uh, but it was so yeah, nice no to idea. have you on on air sure sure thank you thank you uh, enjoy yes bye okay that was nice <laughs> yes so in this position rook e1 check i have and i exchanged the rook and my a pawn is just queening basically So this would have been a nicer way to yeah. play, but I misplayed and I played bishop b6. Bishop b6. So takes takes rook a6. Yeah. I thought f4. The point is now he cannot really play knight to e4. Yeah, because of rook into e4. Yes, exactly. So I thought if his knight has to go back, then for sure my position is good, right? Yeah. He went ninety two. Ninety two. You pushed on. And I played f three. Yeah. I thought like if g f three, queen h three is there, and you know this should be very good position for me. And then I realized that, oh, f three, he doesn't need to be scared. He can just move the knight, and uh, probably knight g three, mm -hmm. because again he'll be eyeing the e four square later on. Yeah. For example, f g two, and then queen b three check. Yeah. Yeah, and the knight would come to e4. Yes. And he has lot of counterplay. So, yes. So, but he he played knight f4, which looks like more active. But now I don't take on g2. I play knight d4. Very strong move. And you are threatening knight e2. Now my center. Yeah. In a way. I'm threatening knight e2, or even just like you know controlling all the key squares. Like his queen is dominated on d1. and there's a very nice trick okay i'll let you find it if gf3 there are many ways to win but there is one way which is very nice yeah i should i find it? i saw it i lost the viewers <laughs> i lost the viewers because you know i just yesterday i taught them knight fork so i i could find it immediately yeah but i think it's embarrassing for me to ask because there are many ways to win like for example queen f5 also wins here yeah, yeah. and you know 
just attacking the knight but yeah probably not the best way to ask <laughs> <laughs> but still i mean people uh, would love to interact and find this uh, move i think at your place uh, today khichdi is cooking <laughs> right <laughs> i think i think viewers are like the most attentive chat is the most attentive uh, species in the world they will listen to every little thing <laughs> yes amruta is cooking and uh, i have kept the door open so that the wifi signal comes in and th- that's how you know i think wifi ka pata nahi par cooker ki city hai khichdi op <laughs> okay everyone's right perfect answer rookie one check queeny one and knight into f3 and it's completely winning for black yes mm. so he played uh, rook a1 yeah i think it was just a time pressure move like you know he had like 2 seconds or something he just played rook a1 but yeah it's just lost now my all my pieces are much much better than him queen knight rook and number pawn wow. so overwhelming advantage rook f8 and it was like yes we win india wins the gold and we oh, celebrated after this wow. game so much amazing it was like epic <laughs> yeah i can imagine you know china as a team is much stronger than individual chinese players so when china plays as a team in olympiad or any tournament it's very difficult to beat them because of their team spirit and the fact that uh, vidit and other three indians adiban seturaman and sashikiran beat the chinese team fantastic fantastic great moment for indian yes. chess ah and Gang- ganguly is in the chat and he says awesome preparation and game vd so he is here i don't know if he is sarcastic or not but <laughs> thanks gangs <laughs> yeah uh, so that was with its game against wei and one of the most uh, uh, with its most memorable wins in the Uh, italian we will now quickly with it look at two more games uh in the from in yeah but as ganguly said you know i have to sleep soon so <laughs> yeah yeah we will look at uh, them uh, not in as much depth as we saw this game yes. but this one is a legendary game so before i move to it we have nearly 1600 people watching this guys please like the stream uh, and uh, show your love Uh, I think there are how many likes? I I always like to see this because one point one point three. Let's make it one point five. Uh, and and you know uh, earlier I never used to ask for likes or something, but now I feel like you know it's it's nice to so that people can like and show that they are watching this stream, listening to me. It feels good. Uh, by the way, a big shout out to Sandeep Venkata who says. not only ghoda respectable in the stream ghoda doesn't exist here since we call it night vidit op sagar op sagar looking forward to see you do cricket commentary some day it will be interesting <laughs> no I, sandeep is also a big chess lover i see him many times in my streams and summer stream as well so he is following all the chess updates very regularly very nice to see such people who are enjoying the game i think it is from sandeep that i realized uh, on your stream that there is a currency called zar <laughs> <laughs> which is which what is it called south, south african. african it's south african okay yeah it's south african currency fantastic uh, kappa 322 who who is a regular viewer says since we are discussing italian have a question as white what are the best moves to make the opponent except oh this is going to be a tough one with it nak manson gambit which i find difficult what is nak manson gambit i don't know i remember on one of you your google on one of your stream someone asked you what was jerome gambit and you said wait let me google and you checked it out yes, i also didn't I, know i didn't know <laughs> and uh, here nak manson i think uh, kappa we don't know what it is so maybe you can let us know I think it is uh, e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 knight f6 d4 e d castles knight e4 Okay I think rook e1 d5 Ah isn't this the fried liver attack Or no I am very bad with names I and they used to play like queen a5 here uh 94 yeah bishop e6 bishop e6 now knight g5 knight e g5 and long castle but i think there is a simpler way to play 
like instead of this uh, queen d5 knight c3 you can uh, knight c3 now you can just sorry queen d5 knight c3 queen d7 you can play knight e4 bishop e7 so now they play bishop g5 castles bishop e7 queen e7 and okay it's equal knight d4 and it's an equal position this is and this this credit goes to erwin lamy ah. who i think made a dvd on this uh, all the sidelines of e4 e5 yeah. and he actually you should check it out it's a wonderful dvd by erwin okay if you guys want to have a look at it check it out in the chess base india shop it's there two volumes uh, gambits against one e4 uh, gambits with one e4 sort of refuted not refuted but best replies for for it from black uh with it i remember once i was preparing for adiban yeah. and adiban plays all kinds of gambit i just checked that dvd because <laughs> i don't i didn't want to check every little gambit what adiban can play is so unpredictable so i just checked that dvd and made a you know that was my preparation <laughs> yeah maybe if erwin would have named it something like how to beat adiban dvd then it would have sold very well <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know uh, this it just now is what i call encyclop encyclopedic knowledge of a, of a top gm so he didn't know what nack manson gambit was but he knew exactly what to do against these moves he googled it and he found that this is the gambit and then uh, he found the exact move queen d7 usually when you ask a player they are more like yeah i have seen this i remember sometimes it is queen d8 sometimes it's queen oh. e5 oh no 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 i'm wrong i'm wrong i'm wrong instead of rook e1 knight c3 is knight manson gambit ah instead of rook when here here knight c3 kar op idli idli yeah i think now uh, i see yeah. that we are back okay. but uh, i think it's better to like you know resume i mean that's my opinion what what well, what do you whatever you say like yeah we can we can resume it uh, later uh, i mean we can if if internet is the issue we can have a look at one game more and then we can end it uh, or else uh, we can stop it right now whatever you say i think we can do it somewhere when like it uh, net is more stable as you said it's raining as well so it could be a problem again okay. and then the link would go off uh okay okay guys so so we are we are back on air now everything is okay but it would be better to to continue this session we have seen one game by the way just to finish this with it nakmanson gambit knight c3 doesn't look like a good move right yeah, i mean i first time i see it actually <laughs> the point must be like if you take d c queen d5 there is either bishop f7 or queen d5 i don't know which one yeah queen d5 queen d5 look maybe something like this but i don't see it very scary <laughs> castle next move you can play bishop f7 probably in slow so, but it's like take here check i mean i have no idea yeah, yeah. yeah. look scary <laughs> look scary for sure yeah. so probably easiest could be just take knight c3 and pawn takes and you can play d5 i mean at least from what i can see so far and just play bishop e7 castle the this as this you know if you have extra material uh, one of the plus is that you can always give it back <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and what you suggest is looks pretty good i think black has a very good score as i check in mega database so looks good i guess Kappa, that's your answer to Nack Manson Gambit. Uh, take on c3 with the knight and d5. It looks okay, right? I mean, it's funny that I didn't know about this <laughs> knight c3. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because at that level, nobody plays like this. So, but very, very interesting. Uh, thanks, Kappa, for mentioning. I this. think the Italian is filled with so many sacrificial lines. It's it's really fantastic. Uh, Kappa, as he. Um, mentioned in another super chat is that nak mansen is when you sacrifice f3 knight i think he wanted to say c3 knight c3. and your bishop at f. f7 to put a strong attack on the king side leading to checkmate if black is inaccurate yeah yeah right mm -hmm. okay guys so good with it um, thanks for coming in showing such a great game uh, by way and i think we should 
have uh, part two at some point or instead of doing part two on the Italian, uh, we can do one small part on some other opening. That would be wonderful, but on a later date. Sure. Can, can, I think sure, guys sure. have been calling, saying this for a long time that with its Catalan, one uh, game of <laughs> with it in the Catalan would be really nice. So we can look at it at some point. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Happy to do okay. that. Okay, so with it now, it's time for you for some uh, exercise or something in the evening? Yes, yes. I've started uh, my exercise. Like, I was streaming so often and I was not doing, like, you know, proper... Uh, there was no proper schedule and I realized that the most important thing is health, which I was neglecting. Mm -hmm. And now I decided, okay, I should not neglect it. And at least take 30 minutes out prioritize it above other things even above your chest practice and everything else yeah yes because if health is not there what is the point yeah. right so i have to build it i'm i'm not saying that i'm doing it regularly i'm now again starting so it's day two <laughs> yeah yeah that's great it's always well begun is half work done so thanks a lot with it for for coming on air and guys uh, do like this stream also make sure that if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to with its YouTube channel It's I think one of the fastest growing YouTube channels in chess world uh, I think within some What 10 days or something you have 30,000 subscribers now already? Yes, I had 6,000 two years ago something five or six thousand but yeah in last 10 days it has grown Quite yeah, yeah, and the race is to reach 100,000 before uh, in this month. So let's hope that happens. Uh, any any streams tonight with it? You are coming on air. Yes, uh, in the night usually I do one stream every day. So sometimes it's like just doing basic uh, chess and chill is what I call, where I'm relaxing, interacting with people, and looking at some chess. And sometimes. For example, I'll be playing some proper blitz and stuff like this. Five minutes versus oh. 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, proper blitz, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, so with its uh, channel has some very interesting content. Please go there. And he's also learning comedy uh, from the comedians. <laughs> so that's very nice. But with it, this was a hardcore chess session. And uh, it was great fun looking at chess with you. Yes, same here, same here. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.